Welcome to the Discover Montcalm podcast, where we're going to take a look at the communities, the businesses, the attractions, and the people that make up Montcalm County. Here is your podcast host, Dwayne Reed. Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Discover Montcalm podcast. I have Jim Aaron here from the radio station, which is kind of interesting that we're on video and you usually just hear his voice. Uh, I know they do some Facebook Live stuff in that, but Discover Montcalm Podcast, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and www.discovermontcompodcast.com or and on YouTube. You can also contact me at 231-250-9624. Well, enough of that. Jim, let's get right into talking here. Um, well, you know there's a reason uh, the saying, uh, face for radio. Well, That's me. <laughs> a, a buddy of mine in, in the uh, Chicago area is retired, used to do a lot of Chicago radio, mm -hmm. and he's now doing it. Um, he just got lined up to do some stuff in uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. just to, you know, he's retired. He's just kind of, you know, and I, I on his Facebook said, you have a voice for radio, <laughs> you know, because I knew that whole thing. And, yeah. and he comes back with, yeah, and they can't see me either. Right. <laughs> So Bingo. it was. So he, he got the pun. I was just being. I was just being nice. So, Jim, where did you grow up? And tell me a little bit about some of the things that you did as a child. Yeah. Well, I grew up in uh, Parma, Michigan. Uh, that's around Jackson. Okay. And uh, how I got into radio was uh, a gentleman by the name of Gary Osborne, and uh, we had a farm there with a bungalow. And he and his wife rented that. And once I found out he was on the radio, that was it. I was his child almost, mm -hmm. much to his uh, chagrin probably. But uh, so he got me into radio, taught me. And uh, I was a few years just going in and behind the scenes stuff. And then I finally got to go on the air probably when I was 15 or so. Well, that'd yeah. be quite a, I mean, experience. Yeah. But to know that there's somebody locally that saw your interest mm -hmm. and groomed you, taught yeah. you, you know, the ins and outs, and then allowed you to, I mean, 15, that'd be kind of cool. Right. It was incredible. I mean, for a 15-year-old, uh, all my classmates were, you know, kind of jealous. And, uh, of course, I took them into the radio station and... Mm -hmm. uh, that gave me some uh, cred, oh, sure. street cred, you know. Yeah, and you know, what better way to learn your chops than to go out and, and do it? Um, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of uh, radio station was it? Top 10 radio, what was it? Pretty much what we do at WGLM now, that's where I got my chops. Mm -hmm. And when we decided to do uh, WGLM, uh, we were deciding, well, what, what are we going to play? Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of music? And we pretty much said, why not what we grew up with, life. Sure. So 70s, 80s, 90s uh, is uh, what we decided on. So. And the farther we get into the 2000s, that starts to creep up a little, a little differently. Yep, I'm digging through the uh, 2000s as we speak. I like to do what we call let the music season mm -hmm. a little bit you know let it get hot get overplayed that right. uh, radio does uh, unfortunately and then uh, you know 10 years or so then start to play it again so talking about your job on the radio is there a funny story that you could share with us that you oh. remember in any of your times that that, that is, uh, I, I guess, PG. <laughs> right. Can you share a funny story with us? Oh, my goodness. Uh, PG, you've uh, pigeonholed me there. Um, I'm trying to think. Because I'm, I'm sure that, you know, we've all had funny things happening to right. us on the job right. and, and, and that. But, you know... Is there that one moment that you go, I'll never forget this? And even yeah. if you have to move it to PG, <laughs> share it with us. Well, it's more of a radio state, uh, almost uh, not supernatural, but there's always, especially when you're in a radio station alone, mm -hmm. uh, there's odd noises, strange things happen. 
and a number of those have happened to me over the years. Uh, probably recently had a young uh, uh, child come in about 6 a.m. and I didn't know who he was. I was on the air. He just popped in there and didn't acknowledge me. The entire time I spent five minutes going, are you okay? Where are your parents? He was just in his uh, jammies, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, finally I found out he uh, had uh, ADD or something. They had okay. left the house. But for five minutes I thought I saw my first ghost. Right, The right. hair on the back of my neck stood up. And uh, like I say, because he didn't acknowledge me at all. So, so you're thinking, was, oh my goodness, am I actually talking to I someone? thought I was seeing an apparition. I really did for about five minutes. And that happened just probably about two years ago. Really? Yeah. You've been in radio. You said you started when you were 15. Mm -hmm. um, had you always been in radio? I mean, was that pretty much from one station to the next? Not really. I did radio part-time or a hobby. Mm -hmm. Uh, until we bought the stations in uh, 2009. Okay. Um, but before that, I did computers, uh, servers for companies, and that was my main job. Okay, so you're, um, you're asking people, you know, is the printer right. on? Yeah. <laughs> did you turn a on button? Move, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. But, yeah, it was just a part-time or, or hobby or fun for me most of the time. So in, you said in 2009, right. you took over ownership. What, what bug in 2007 or 2008 that this all started to happen? What came about that you went, I think I'm going to own a radio station? Right. <laughs> well, I have a business partner in Ionia. We own WION mm -hmm. uh, in Ionia. And we, that's been uh, 2004 when we got those. Um, so Jim called me one day and said, uh, W, well, at that time, WSCG mm -hmm. in Greenville is up for sale. And I was in Indiana working, doing computers. And he said, uh, you wouldn't want to buy that, would you? <laughs> Silent. He thought I was going to say, no, you know, he had a nice cush job in mm -hmm. Indiana. Silence, and from there I talked with my wife, and because it was a quite a, you know, something sacrificed on her end as well. Mm -hmm. She said yes, go for it. So, did. Wow. And uh, came up here. So. Got you back into the radio game. Right, full time. Back into the radio game. And for you know that kicked in the gut feeling when you change. Mm -hmm. jobs or whatever. I had that for a couple of weeks. Like, what did I do? And, uh, but it was just, now I, you know, I, I don't know what else I'd be doing. Well, yeah. it wasn't like you were going into something you, you had never, ever touched before. Right. You know, but now it's on your shoulders. Um, for our listeners, you know, you've got WGLM. Mm -hmm. The GLM stands for something. Greenville, Lakeview, Montcalm, and Macosta, because okay. we cover Macosta County yeah. too. So, yeah. so I mean, it, it's it's like whenever you're looking for that right business name or the right slogan, mm -hmm. you spend a lot of time moving letters right, around. Right, right. Um, and then did... they have to be available because if the FCC database is uh, WGLM was in Lafayette, Indiana, for a number of years, but when we applied mm -hmm. for it, they had given up the call letters. So. Since you've been on the radio, since you've been back on the radio 2009 till now, have you ever, have you had the opportunity to take somebody like at mm -hmm. you when you were 15 that you, you know, somebody brought you along, have you had an opportunity to kind of give back and help somebody else get on the radio? Absolutely. Probably, well, I've, trained probably 50 people, but only about four have worked out. But those four like radio, and he, uh, one has moved on, still on radio, and the other three are still with me. That's wonderful. I mean, because yeah. it's, it's funny how life does circles. Yeah. You know, and, and, and how 
you know, you, you're not looking for it, then it shows up and now you're here and what somebody helped you and now you're helping somebody else. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's, you know, we can kind of say it's a cycle of life, but it, it's probably fun on your end to kind of go, well, wait a minute, somebody helped me. <laughs> so I want to help somebody right. else. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel good. Um, we're going to take a short break right now and we're going to acknowledge our sponsors and we'll be back right after this. We'd like to thank our sponsors. West Michigan Technology and Design Solutions is your perfect choice for managed IT, website design, website hosting, and consulting services. WMTDS.com, 616-485-7600. Custom Vinyl Signs and Busy Bee Embroidery and Gifts is your one-stop shop for embroidery, vinyl, screen printing, and engraving needs. Go to CBSDBusyBees.com or call 989-261-7446. And DW Video, your film and videotape specialist. They design websites and business videos that tell and share your story. DWVideo.com, 231-250-9624. Now, back to our podcast. I'd like to welcome you back to the Discover Montcom podcast. I have Jim Aaron here from WGLM 106.3. He's on the video for YouTube. Um, and we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, off camera that there's that old adage that, you know, you got a voice for radio um, or a face for radio, however <laughs> you want to say that. Um, but we've been, we've been talking about how he got started. Is there any plans that you have, um, you know, because at some point, you know, are you going to, are you going to do this forever? Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you have any, any plans on where you want to take it over the next two to three, four years right. uh, with the station? Do you have anything? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, well, I'm getting towards retirement, mm -hmm. um, but once radio gets in your blood, it stays there. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep it local as well that's what we push as you well know mm -hmm. and want to keep that up uh could just sell the thing and you know a big corporation probably would come in and swoop it up and more than likely believe it or not they'll pay top dollar and they'll shut it down because they don't want the competition right so and lord knows uh, local stations are getting to be fewer and far between especially owned locally correct exactly yeah. so i'm training uh, several people not that it takes several people to take my place but and it's not rocket science but it's fun and it's highly specialized mm -hmm. so it takes uh, a special person to do what i do well so. i commend you on that because you know people when they get to that point, could just take top dollar right off into the sunset and say, yeah. okay, but I, I commend you at your thought of trying to keep it local, trying to get somebody locally to, to, to purchase and to run with it. And you said it's in your blood. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, as long as you got a line, right. you, could, you could be on a beach in Hawaii and saying... I'm here. I mean, so, the, you know, special appearances or whatever, you know, I mean, I, I don't know how long it would take you before your wife goes, stop it. Right, <laughs> right. You know, or please get back on the radio. You're driving uh, me nuts. <laughs> it'd be more likely that. Uh, but yeah, you're right with technology today. I can do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, payroll, because believe it or not, it's just not all fun on the radio. Once I turn off the mic, uh, there's the business end of it. So let's let's touch on that for a yep. minute. What's a what's a typical day, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, because they hear you on the radio in the right. morning. Um, but what's a what's your typical day like? Yeah. Well, the morning show six to ten is live. Mm -hmm. uh, after that begins the rest of the day. In fact, usually longer than the four hours I'm on the air. Uh, that includes. Uh, uh, production, you know, you have to get the commercials done, 
uh, payroll, for example. You got to do that each week. Yeah, people uh, keep yeah. you keep them around. You got to pay them. <laughs> I found that out after uh, missing a few. Yes, you know. yes. Uh, just various things. Uh, calling clients. Sometimes I have to put on the uh, sales hat mm -hmm. and do some sales. But I have several others that, thank goodness, do that. I'm not a great salesman as far as that goes. So. Well, surround um, yourself with people that are better. Exactly. Allows you to do what you want to do. Exactly. You know, Henry so. Ford did the same thing. It was, you know, mm -hmm. he was, he said, hey, I can't do it all, but I can right. surround myself with those people. And then there's uh, preparing the next day. You got to do a music log, which thank goodness computers mm -hmm. handle that now. And what we call a traffic log or commercial log. And then we uh, combine those two and put them in the computer and we're ready for the next day. That's usually the last thing I do before I. Exit well, you want to make sure when you show up the next morning, <laughs> right. you're not. I'm sure there's times that you're running at the last minute. Something yeah. happens overnight. Right. You know, big snowstorm or whether it's an accident or something local because you right. are local. Yeah. Um, we talked in the first half about, you know, maybe the funniest thing that's ever happened. Mm -hmm. um, can you share what you figure to be one of your most memorable mm -hmm. interviews or times that you're going, wow, I really, I, I'm glad I'm doing <laughs> this and I'm glad I'm here right now. Yeah, probably a conglomeration of many things uh, like when we do remotes and go out and visit uh, the uh, local businesses for a remote and then our listeners will show up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably the most thing we value is not only our clients, but uh, uh, listeners too. Yes. I mean, if, if we didn't have them, uh, we wouldn't be sitting here, so. And I, you know, uh, they're the ones that keep the doors open. Right, you know, lights and, on and, yep, and all water that. flowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked a little bit about what you do every day, but is, what's the biggest challenge of in today's world, today's technology, right. what's the biggest challenge that you have as a radio station owner? You know, is, is there something in particular that's like, oh. Probably, ironically, the most thing that has helped us, and that's technology. Okay. Because uh, we still get, uh, although less resistance now, because uh, the listeners around the area and the businesses no, we've been here for 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, 15 years ago, we were new kids on the block, so they were hesitant to, you know, of, are they going to be around, you know? So now we've knocked down that wall a little bit, but we still get, uh, especially younger business owners, uh, they're going, why should I do radio, you know? And it's a or, good question. Right. So answer that for me. Yeah. Why, why should somebody do, you know, we're talking to the advertisers right now, Right. Uh, we know we've got the listeners because they call in. They let you know when you do something right or when you do something wrong. Right. Um, how do you answer that question? Well, we kind of let the listeners and uh, the businesses answer that because, well, the list or the client will say, "Wow, we had several people come in. They heard our ad about whatever it was, mm -hmm. and uh, they." That's when it works, and that's when we win them over, is when the listeners go in and say, hey, I heard that. I'd like that right. particular product or whatever. Because we're bombarded. I mean, oh, this, this little contraption right here, right. you know, um, is, is one of those things that, you know, we're always trying to win over listeners. We're right. trying to, you know, whether it's a social media, and I know that you're on social media, you mm -hmm. do your morning shows, Facebook Sometimes Live. do Facebook Live. Depends yeah. on your guest and right. that kind of stuff. Um, so you're, you're, you're trying to keep that right. going. Um, you're streaming live. Yes. You're, so how does somebody find that? That's at m1063.com. Okay. And there's a listen live button and click on and and it's you listen right live. There. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what we do is if you listen to, say, a big station, Grand Rapids or yeah. Lansing or whatever, they'll say 50 minutes of commercial free music. But guess what? 
they've shoved your commercial, and I'm talking to a client who buys a mm -hmm. Grand Rapids station, they've shoved your commercial in the middle of 10 minutes of solid commercials. Right. And I'm not, I'm not blowing that out of proportion. I've heard it sure. before. Uh, I mainly listen to my station, but occasionally I poke around. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, 10 minutes. And if you're, and we've had to win over some uh, businesses because of that. It's, I tried radio, I even tried Grand Rapids, and it didn't work for me. And I asked them how much they spent, mm -hmm. which is quite a bit. And uh, they said, yeah, I never heard my commercial. Well, it was in 10 minutes of commercials. So we, I don't like to go any more than two to three minutes per break. So I might have three or four breaks an hour, right. but it's it's uh, never more than five commercials. But in there's a row. news, there's music, Correct. there's right. local events, there's things yep. that are within mm -hmm. that, and that your your commercials and uh, you know so that's that's how you answer the business that right. says, why should I advertise with you? Right, and we uh, we strategically place commercials. Some businesses like them right after the news and before the weather. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, a, usually a premium for that type of thing or before sports or agricultural news. Sure. Uh, so depends on yeah. your business. Try to find Correct. the best time. I mean, if, if you've got a product that's hitting people that can't sleep at night, that's right. when you advertise is at right. night, not during the day. And we uh, have uh, one uh, O'Connor shoes in uh, Greenville there. Uh, we run, well, you remember Paul Harvey and the rest right. of the story? Yes, of course. I found one, it was a couple, three years ago or longer now, uh, an FTP site that had all of his rest of the stories. Wonderful. And I grabbed them because mm -hmm. I knew it would disappear. One right. of the, and it did. I luckily got them all. And he loves that program. And... That's what he advertises on. He says, I want Paul Harvey. Well, and that's it. Be, you know. Paul Harvey had a way of telling a story. Oh, absolutely. And in, in that voice. And engaging <laughs> you. You, right. know, you know, Wolfman Jack. I mean, that we're, I'm dating myself. That's another one. We do but, Halloween. We run a, uh, a conglomeration of, uh, of uh, Wolfman Jack. Yeah. Uh, How about Halloween the War of the stories. Worlds? You can bring that back and scare people. That, I, was, that was the 30s, I believe. I think I ran that one year on Halloween, but now yeah. I just do the Wolfman Jack yeah, special. Yeah. So I mean, that's if you put yourself back in the time that radio was the means right. of, and you come in the middle of the Orson Welles. Oh yeah, that scared a lot of people back you then. Know, There's stories on that. But yeah. but that's that's kind of dating both of it. But sure. the power of radio. Exactly. Power of radio. I mean, yeah. even back then. Yeah. Um, we've talked a lot about mm -hmm. your career and, and the things that you've done. Let's bring it back local as mm -hmm. we start to wrap this up. Um, in your mind, why should someone discover Montcalm County? Right. This county, we looked uh, before we bought the stations. Of course, we were in Ionia, so it's just one county up. But uh, we came up here and we spent a year deciding to whether to buy it or not once mm -hmm. it was offered for sale. So I came up, spent several weeks, uh, went around the county, and uh, was just impressed with the small town atmosphere, which you like, mm -hmm. but still, you know, big town stuff you can get and it's just a hop skip and a jump exactly you know? yeah you're not far from lansing or grand rapids yeah yeah and mount pleasant depending on where you're right. at in the county right determines where you're going to if you're a gambler you're going to mount pleasant that's right that's right <laughs> jim as we wrap this up we've talked about a lot but is there anything that you'd like to end with just to kind of give us walking papers out the door Right. Pretty much thanking, you know, everyone in uh, Montcalm County, the businesses, the listeners, because like I say, when we bought the stations uh, in 2009, we were the new kids on the block. And 
you know, they kind of, and what I've noticed about rural counties or small towns, you know, they're going to check you out. Oh, and yes. uh, you got to, you got to pass the muster. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think we have, we've won over a lot of listeners and businesses. I do, a lot of times uh, businesses will say, do you have a ratings book or something? Well, won't get into the details, but I don't want to spend that money for a uh, ratings book. I use the garage sale test, and that because I like to garage sale. Okay. And summertime, obviously. And as I'm going around to these garage sales, they'll have a radio usually in their garage. And a lot of times, it's on us. So. Mm -hmm. I consider that a win right, right there. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. Um, it's always nice to bring somebody that is on the radio or in a different setting into, you know, and because it's discover.com, that's, you know, I, I want to know the people behind the sign, you know, um, and I know with, with radio, a lot of times, if they just hear your voice, they start to picture what you look like. Right. You know, I mean, we, we, we do that with almost everybody that we hear on the radio. And then we see their picture and go, oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? You know, and that can be good or bad. I, I, I'm going to move on to the closing of this. I'd like to thank you for tuning into this episode of the DiscoverMontCom podcast. Again, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, or go to DiscoverMontCom podcast.com. You can catch all our episodes there. You can also catch the RSS feed that you can put in your favorite podcast app that you have. But more importantly, thank you for watching the Discover Montcom podcast, listening to it, and just remember to buy and shop locally. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Connect and subscribe to Discover Montcom podcast at discovermontcompodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Discover Montcom podcast. To be featured in an upcoming show, contact Dwayne at 231 2509624 remember to subscribe at discovermontcompodcast.com